In this video, we take apart our Max Air fan, which suffered a catastrophic failure as we left our Canadian homeland this spring. As you can see in this clip here, we were sitting here minding our own business and the fan just opened and closed and turned on and turned off and kind of lost its mind. And so I pulled the fuse and the next morning I pulled it apart to find that the condensation where water condensed on the roof or rather on the lid even though we had the little pillow in here to insulate it uh, our breath got up onto the lid and then dripped down and it dripped onto the circuit board uh, the infrared sensor was all rusty and cruddy looking and then the uh, keypad actually eroded itself away so I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix that first thing you need to do is pull the four screws and the whole board will drop out or rather this whole panel will drop out like this then you just pull the connectors off for the two motors and they're different so you don't need to worry about that and then I actually wired mine in with a connector when I installed it so I can take this all out so now it's hopped down and I'll show you the rest so the main control board is just held on with four or rather three little screws here and that comes off like this and then there's a connector for the temperature sensor. And now the circuit board is loose. Nicey nice. Okay, so here's the circuit board uh, removed from the fan. This is the infrared receiver that was boiling in its own sauce and then there was little dots of water and corrosion all over the board. So I took a toothbrush and water and just scrubbed it, made it nice and clean. Now, when they originally built this, they could have easily avoided this problem by using a conformal coating like this, made by MG Chemicals. So we're going to do that today, just to keep this from happening again. And if you have a Max Air fan and you plan on ever cold weather camping, where there's a chance of condensation, I recommend you do the same. But before you spray it, you need to cover up anything that still needs to have a connection on it. So in my case there's a uh, keypad uh, connector here I've covered with masking tape and then these two uh, sockets which are used for remote uh, buttons. You can, you can purchase optional remote buttons that, that you can push and they're a lot of fun apparently. So, got that covered. Okay, and inside these little connectors, which would be really hard to tape, uh, one is for the rain sensor, which I don't have on mine, and this white one down in here is for the temperature sensor, and so you don't want to get conformal coating on that. So I've just stuffed some fun blue tack in there just to keep it from getting on there. And then this stuff is basically spray paint. It's clear coat, clear spray paint essentially, but it's got zero electrical conductivity. And you put on a few layers and then it will, uh, you know, put them on as thick as you want until it's nice and, and nicey nice. Let's do it. See the glare? Yes, right there. Okay, so as I'll show in a clip here, our keypad, uh, button keypad for our fan, it actually corroded off right at this uh, joint here where this ribbon cable meets the membrane for the buttons. And so we had to order a new one, which was not fun. Major nuisance to try and get them to ship it to me. So where it actually corroded, right there, in between these two, where the 
where the ribbon meets the keypad. It eroded right away. And so, this time I'm going to seal that up with E6000 RTV sealant. I've used that in earlier lives and it works quite well. But first I'm going to install this, so just peel the backing off. So the other thing that caused a problem was the sensor here for the remote control. It sits or lives in a little clear plastic dome and that filled up with water. Now this replacement keypad, to my surprise, doesn't have that clear dome included. So I'm not going to worry about it, I'm just going to leave it off. But if you have this fan and want to preventatively keep that from happening, I'd suggest drilling a small hole in that clear plastic dome to keep that from being a problem. Now flipping this over, I'm going to put some E6000 in there and just goop it in nice and thick. Like so. Nicey nice. And as long as that keypad membrane adhesive back is pressed on there, it won't leak out the bottom and then just reassemble it. So, we've got our super glossy board. I've pulled the tape off of the pin pad connector. Each of the screws has a little nylon washer. Put that back in place. And we're good to go. Okay, then it's just a matter of putting it all back together which involves uh, plugging in these wires, quite simply. It would probably be a lot easier just to take out the whole fan unit, climb on top and pull the screws and do that. But I'm not a fan of the easy way, so we're doing it this way. A little bit harder because you need to massage all these wires into the track in place. Once you got your wires tucked in, just a matter of tightening all the screws up. And as you can see, Kara has cleaned out all the schmoo from up in there. Now we give her a test. Oops, need a fan blade first. Mm -hmm. And the L and key, please. Test. Success! Yay! Okay, that's it for this time. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. We'll see you next time.